Wow, so cat. Oh, I love it. Every year, this is when you get to see the markets come alive, these social capital markets that we've been building together. All those amazing transactions, the deals getting done. But here's the reality. Those transactions sit in the context of broader systems, market systems, complex interdependencies, that as we look at the rules of the game, we have to look both at the system as well as the individual transaction. The cool thing is, as Ben just stole my line, we made this up. So as a historian, I'm a, I have one of those really clever PhDs in history that lets you point to the date where we made stuff up. So in 1848, a bunch of guys sitting around the Chicago Board of Trade thought derivatives might be a good idea. It wasn't actually until the 1950s that we were really thinking about private equity and then venture capital. These are things we made up. They are not the laws of the universe. They are not like the albatross that comes from Earth. We made this up. So the cool thing is, we get to change it. We made it up, and so we can change it. When Kevin and Tim and I were starting Good Capital, we were mixing around with some of the rules of venture capital. People thought that was shocking. What are you doing? This is the way it works. Crap. It doesn't have to work that way. You can do it someplace. You can do it in a different way. One of those moments, my colleague on the stage, I was at Investor Circle about five years ago. And you were doing a talk on the purpose of capital. You and Jay and a few others. And I watched the former managing director, JP Morgan, get up on stage and say, I've now joined the real world. Something like that. And I had been a high school teacher when you were at JP Morgan. And everybody told me, finance, that's the real world. Learn how the real boys play. And here I was, this moment, when I watched John Fullerton up on a stage validate that maybe my rules weren't the crazy ones and that he was joining our world. Because it's not just enough that we can. What John walks around talking about is that we must change these rules. So thanks. Thanks for that, Joy. Um, my, uh, my, my introduction to impact investing really started at JP Morgan back in 1997, believe it or not, uh, when I invested in the Edison Schools Project, which is a for-profit charter school management company. And that's when I first got this idea of aligning uh, capital with social purpose. And um, when I left Morgan in 2001, I always like to get that in. I wasn't there during all this. <laughs> Um, when I it's left JP fault. Morgan in 2001, um, I went into this sort of deep study, and that's when I discovered systems thinking, system science. I read Dana Meadows' uh, Limits to Growth, and I had this kind of epiphany that um, rather than focusing on just problems, we needed to actually understand systems. And so I've become a passionate um, uh, studier of systems, and I'm convinced now that we need to not just address problems, but actually think about shifting the systems that actually create this, the problems. So my question back to you then, John. And I, I looked at you know, the USAID slides. We've all seen slides like that, right? When you think systems, how many of you think complex, a little out of my reach, not where I can go? Wow, you're gonna make my brain hurt a little bit. I can't do that. Give me a simple product. The reality is, there's no more important time for each of us to believe that we can change these systems. Because while I'm thrilled as people leave positions of power and think about changing new rules, I also want to make sure that we pay attention to power. Because if we simply change the rules and don't change the underlying structural inequities 
of race, class, and gender. So there's somebody fundamentally different sitting at the tables next time, that it's not the insiders again making up the rules, but that we're challenged the underlying power structures. We, we work on two things at Criterion Institute. One is, you heard Jackie talk about the gender lens and investing, and the number of times I walk into rooms and I'm sitting with the two folks, both believe they're empowered to change the rules. Well, usually one a little bit more than the other. Some point in the conversation, the woman says to me, well, I don't really understand finance. And she's got a degree in finance. We need to stop saying that. We need to stop saying that systems are beyond our reach. We need to be the ones who reach in, set the tables ourselves, set new tables. We also work with churches. Okay, I know a lot of you believe that there's like a crap load of money sitting in Christian churches in the United States. There's a bunch. But there's also a whole bunch of storefront churches sitting in South LA and East Harlem who don't feel like they have a seat at the table. And if we can have those pastors, just for a moment, feel like they're changing the rules of the game, not just getting access, then we're changing the structures of power. So the question is, how do we do this? So I, um, first of all, was really moved by that film, so thank you um, again for that. And I'm, I'm a real believer in the power of storytelling, and that's a, um, an idea that keeps coming up um, actually in the foundation community now as well as in, um, in the world that I normally operate in. And um, I was, uh, I actually have to disagree though with the statement that Al Gore made, which is that we know what to do, we just need to summon the will to do it. I think there's actually a deeper problem, which is that we don't really understand the depth of the systems and the, um, uh, the implications of how the systems work that generate all the problems that we think we do understand. And there's a, um, well, I'll, I'll come to Alan Savory and holistic thinking later, but um, I'd like to share with you um, a, a very simple chart, a simple diagram that's up on the wall that uh, I learned from a, um, uh, a woman named Monica Sharma who spent her career at the United Nations. Um, Richard actually was, was generous enough to introduce her to me and she sort of took Kaplan Institute under her wing as one of her many, many, many children who are out there trying to shift paradigms in the world. And the power of this chart is that um, it sort of describes how uh, at the center, most of us that get up in the morning think about whatever problem it is that we're passionate about, and we go to work on that problem. And that's great, and entrepreneurs do that, government officials do that, foundations do that, um, moms and dads do that. Sometimes children can be problematic. Um, but then there's this other realm out there which was alluded to uh, or has been alluded to throughout this conference which is this consciousness idea and of course we think of people like Dalai Lama who operate in this space of consciousness and what Monica and by the way she operates very much from a space of, of consciousness and, and would believe passionately in the need to uh, raise consciousness around the crisis facing uh, our, our civilization as a result of the way the economic system and capitalism and finance uh, is driving it, which isn't to say that capitalism is wrong, it's just to say that it's no longer sufficient to, uh, to operate in a world that we live in today, the way it operates today. And her main point is that if you want to shift paradigms, and this is sort of going to Dana Meadows, uh, how, to, how to shift um, systems, you need to both work from this place of consciousness you need to have your hands dirty in the real world solving real problems and learning in the process of dealing in the real world issues. But you also need to be conscious that there's a system that is actually typically creating the problems you're trying to solve. And unless you understand the system and learn how to shift the system, we're gonna be constantly playing um, you know, catch up and trying to you know, chase our tail and solve problems that the system is creating. So the work I do at Capital Institute is very much trying to hold from a, you know, from a, work from a place of consciousness, work directly on real life problems, uh, but do it in such a way as, as to learn how to shift the systems that create the problems. Absolutely, and, and what that, I think what that challenges and what, what 
I think what you and I struggle with in our own leadership is if you're working on, if you're not, if you're not direct on the ground working on the problem, and you're, you're not in a yoga retreat dealing with consciousness, <laughs> how do you work on the systems? How, how do you sustain that creative leadership that is required to play, to tolerate ambiguity, to be able to find subtle leverage in what are very, very messy systems. So looking at that question of leadership. You had an example on that. Yeah, I, I, um, so we have, a, we have a project at Capital Institute we call the Field Guide to Investing in a Regenerative Economy. And I, and I believe the word sustainability is insufficient. We need to think in terms of a regenerative system. That's how nature works. That's how we need to have the, the economy operate. And, and the place to learn about regenerative thinking is, is typically not only from academics who, who study this, uh, ecologists, biologists, um, uh, system scientists, but there are practitioners who are actually making this real on the ground. And I've been very fortunate to have um, come across and, and now work with a gentleman named Alan Savory, who's working on the, the problem of the desertification crisis, the issue that the, the world's grasslands, which represent a third of the land-based planet, because of the way the, um, uh, the system works, are in systemic decay. And that's because we basically killed all the natural her herds of elephants and buffalo and bison and replaced them with domesticated animals and we managed them in a, in a very reductionist kind of industrial model, completely ignorant about the importance of herds of animals and the, how they synergistically interact with grass. And the grasslands represent the second largest carbon sink on the planet. So this issue is a, has planetary climate change scale impact and what's fascinating is I've learned from this 75-year-old man from uh, Rhodesia how he's learned how to use and mimic nature using herds to regenerate the natural capital of the grasslands. And, and that's where the insights come from to think about how to shift the entire economic system and how to think about how the financial system as currently constructed with compound interest expanding exponentially forever so we now have a massive amount of financial capital and deteriorating natural capital um, that's how we try to address the system change question. Cool. So how do we take folks like that leader, folks like uh, Cheryl Dahl, the folks out in the room, uh, Vicki Saunders, Jeff Mendelson. We have this whole community of practice that we're building. Uh, Rachel Payne, Suzanne Beagle, these amazing leaders who live at the level of systems change. So we've built a community of practice for them. And they are convening these workshops this afternoon with us to start to talk to you about how do you do this work of systems change. So the community of practice is working on three things. One, let's see if this goes. One is we're building a series of case studies. <laughs> Aha, wrong button. We're building, we're having a series of dialogues among those leaders to talk to each other about the practice of changing the rules of the game. Right, so this is the, how do you change the rules of the game? Yeah, how do you change the rules of the game? How do you do that? So the design session that we're gonna do later this afternoon is actually gonna work through some sort of practical examples of how do you do that. We're working on case studies. So if any of you have case studies that you would like to submit to us to say, I think I have actually effectively changed the rules of market systems, bring them on. The last one is a shared identity. And that is, you know those moments when you're talking about complex systems change and somebody says, sweetie, couldn't you just simplify it, reduce the variables, make it a little simpler? I'm done. We need to embrace this complexity. It can't all be simplified. We need to figure out how we have a shared identity. So we're launching a set of t-shirts today that say, team systems change, we made this up, we can change it. And on the back, it's like the Avengers, only without the spandex and the superhero BS. So we'll have, we'll have these hoodies over at the firehouse where there'll be a panel led by the unbelievable 
Catherine Collins, who's one of the deepest thinkers I know looking at questions of leverage, followed by a design session. John's also got a session looking this afternoon on... Yeah, a quick plug at 2 o'clock, I believe here, we're going to do a deep dive on this concept of ecological overshoot and how that is, uh, causes what I would call financial overshoot. Um, so come join us at, I believe it's 2 o'clock. So grab a hoodie and join us in changing the rules of the game. Thank you very Thank much. You.